Renda. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? I'm great. Man. Good. Yes, very good. Is today today's officially World Peace Day? Today is World Peace Day, September twenty first every September. year. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. The United Nations created it in like the eighties. Oh, so it's been that long. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a while. Obviously, you know, not everybody knows about it or right. does things to observe it, but it's a real thing. So I mean, I actually didn't hear about it till I got familiar with your World Peace mural. Uh, I guess tradition. I don't know if to call it a tradition or or movement. Yeah, a, yeah. You can call it both of those. Both of those, yeah. Or a tour. I mean, I call it a tour, but I call it an endless tour because mm. the word tour makes you think of something that starts and ends. You know, like right. a musician goes on tour and then it ends. Right. And so the World Peace Mural Tour is a tour in the sense that it's a concept that revolves around a central concept mm -hmm. of all these murals that just say World Peace. But it's not a tour in the sense that it will ever end. It's an endless tour, a.k.a. my life's purpose. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really how I look at it. Like, if it's something that I know I could do for the rest of my life, then that makes it my purpose, you know? Like, uh, do it. It, it. I enjoy doing it. It enables me to travel, which is another thing I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. It enables me to meet people, which is another thing I enjoy doing. So, like, it makes sense. So, so there you go. How, how long have you been doing it? Uh, since 2016. I've been doing murals since like 2014. Um, mm -hmm. But the World Peace murals I started in of Miami that is over town and has such a negative stigma around it. Yeah. And, you know, it's known to be historically a, a violent place in recent years, you know, first 48 and, you know, shit like that is what people think about when they think yeah. about Overtown. But they don't realize how historic that part of Miami actually is going back to the early 20s and 30s, as far as at least for African-American culture yeah. in the city. So to have a place that has had a, a violent stigma over it for so many years recently, and then to have a mural about world peace is kind of like super symbolic in a way. It's very dope. Yeah, thank you. Thank very you. Very dope. I mean, I try to make sure a lot of my murals fit into something significant like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, every mural is a mural and, you know, an accomplishment on its own. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. But yeah, a lot, a lot of times I do murals that are in certain areas or have some certain significance that makes it like extra. Right. Like I did one on the, on the border wall between the U.S. and Mexico. Wow. So that was How'd you pull cool. that off? Uh, basically, you know, through the universe, like, I, I like, um, <laughs> this is how interviews with me are, a lot of references to the universe, uh -huh. you know, and that is pretty much my answer to everything. <laughs> but that is how it came about. Like, everything good comes through the universe and through the people you know and the, the situations and the timing and social media and serendipity and synchronicity and just things linking up the way they should because you're in alignment you're linked up the way you should be with yourself mm -hmm. that's alignment you right know? so anyways that being said yeah the the mexico thing um i know a guy named evan he is based in broward he runs this thing called um choose 954 which is like um you know to cultivate um culture and like civic engagement in mm -hmm. in the 954 area code so he does that and so he's got the right mindset. He's he gets it. He gets the universe. Like it's all about networking. Like I gotta kind of if I meet this person and it goes well with that person, you know, yeah, whatever. So one day he just sent me a message that was sent to me and a guy in Mexico, and it was like I want you guys to meet each other. And then um, I looked up the guy and like started talking with him, and he was spearheading a project where he had artists filling up the wall. He was wow. based in Tijuana. And he had artists from all over flying in and like every weekend he would take artists to the wall and give them a section to do. Mm -hmm. So that's how Evan introduced me on Facebook. This, you know, a dude that I know from Broward County. But yeah, it's, it's <laughs> always like that. It's always, you know, hit me with something else. Yes, I, have, I have this, uh, I go by this, this mantra, I guess. I say the universe is always listening. Yeah, yeah, you know, because I'm a firm believer in the power of the tongue. First you heard of all, that Jay Electronica lyric where he says the universe is listening. Yeah. Be careful what you say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's like the power of the tongue and the yeah. power of words. And you know, I know you don't know that much about me, but I'm an MC first before anything else, before DJing, before anything. Is something I've been doing since childhood. Yeah, you know. So to me, 
words have always been super important. You know, I'm very cautious in the words that I say and how I speak to people and how I allow people to speak to me because I just believe in the power of words and the strength in words. So for you, you characterize yourself or define yourself as, as a handwritten artist. Is that yeah. what it is? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's key. Like, I characterize myself as that, you yeah. know, because you could pick your words, especially the words that describe you. Right. You know, but yeah, you could choose your words wisely and create your own reality. Like, um, I have an event coming up in St. Louis, and I was talking with the girl who runs the venue where I'm doing the event, and she created an event page on Facebook and then sent me the link. And then, like, the I let I let her just kind of type the description and it said like graffiti artist render writer will be here blah blah mm. and I wrote back I was like that's cool but could we change graffiti artist to handwritten artist mm. you see what I mean so it's just the little things yeah because like, yeah. technically I'm not a graffiti artist not at all right I'm not you know I use spray paint mm -hmm. and graffiti artists use spray paint and I do walls and graffiti artists do walls but that's pretty much where the similarities where stop, end yeah graffiti is a very distinct style you yeah. know. And so out of respect for graffiti artists, I wouldn't say I'm a graffiti artist. Right. But yeah, words, man. It's um, the word, yeah. And as a hip hop head, see, that's that's where I learned it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's where I learned everything, really. Mm -hmm. But hip hop is a word-based genre. You right. know, it's heavy on the words. How do you feel about hip hop nowadays? Like, because I, I read, I think I read an article you did in, a, I think, Voyage, Voyage Miami. Yeah. And you mentioned, uh, you talked about the golden era. Yeah. Of hip hop. So I'm curious to know, like to you, what do you consider the golden era of hip hop? Uh, everything like 86, like 86 to 96, really, you know? I mean, yes, sir. Especially <laughs> if we're keeping it, like it's got to be 10 years. Those yeah, 10 that years. decade, yeah. Because it includes 88. Of, 88 which is my favorite was, year in hip hop is 88. 88 was something else. Like, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, planetary alignment of sorts that produce some every special special yeah. time yeah and not just in hip-hop just in the world mm -hmm. and it, yeah and just the releases everything that came out 88 but yeah that would be my answer that's the golden era 86 to like 96. how long like when did you actually start uh creating art i guess would you say well, I mean, all my art is an extension of my poetry, and poetry started for me in 2000, doing spoken word performance uh. poetry and stuff. So 2000 is when I got into that, and that was heavy until 2013 or so. But I think it was around 2010-ish mm -hmm. that I started to like think of word-based art, about producing word-based art, you know, about channeling my youth, really, like, you know, in discussing hip hop and origins and answering these kinds of questions and stuff, it all goes together. Because basically, when I was a kid, I was a nerd, like big time, like a nerd for school. You know, I was just into my studies. And like, I had some classes where um, it was open notes, the mm -hmm. test was open notes. So yeah. you, could, you could reference your notes while taking the test. Yeah. So, what I did was I wrote out the entire chapter instead of writing notes mm -hmm. on the chapter i just wrote the chapter mm -hmm. word for word so i was like okay when i take the test i'll have the book <laughs> and it's in my handwriting and i wrote it so it's ingrained so i can reference it really easily right and the less i have to reference it the more i learned i guess you know yeah from this process of just writing everything and because i was writing everything i had to write small so you see where we're headed with this you yeah. know what i mean like that's yeah. what i do for a living right now. i write small stuff yeah but i was doing this for free you know when i was 14 uh every night that was like my reality and it was just writing real small real real small and listening to hip-hop like i had like a a double cassette boom box with a thousand cassettes yeah. you know and so i would just like do my homework and listen to hip-hop so you know i'd say that to say like at some point later in my life i realized that was it you know i realized the reason i'm doing well in life the reason i'm like succeeding the reason i'm happy uh the reason i'm a self-employed artist is because i tapped into that youth like mm. it came full circle i realized it and upon realizing it like embraced it more mm -hmm. you know and so now that's like where i'm at with a firm understanding that like there's a strong connection between young me and current me and future me mm. and these are lessons i learned from krs one i don't know if you've seen him live but he i've what? seen him live like 
eight or nine times. Uh, I've seen him live once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was that, that was incredible. You yeah. got to see him again. But I noticed since I saw him a lot of times in like a year, I saw his set like repeated. You right. know, and it, and it's amazing how much of what he's doing seems like improv, but mm. it's actually the same every show. Mm. He just has it like scripted so well that it seems free. You yeah. know what I mean? Most of it. But anyways, so. In his like routine, he talks a lot about that, uh, about the concept of connecting with your younger self and your older self, and there being a link. It's all you, right. you know, and developing a, like a communication between those three people right. that are in you, you know, and that's like what metaphysics is, and that's again metaphysics is apparent in my art, mm -hmm. and so is my influence from hip hop. Both are apparent in my art, and like all this stuff is linked. And my introduction introduction to metaphysics was through KRS One. Mm -hmm. Like, if you remember, like Ghetto Music, The Blueprint of Hip Hop, and By Any Means Necessary, mm -hmm. and all those old BDP albums. Yeah. On the inside, he wrote the thank yous, and then he signed it, KRS One, yeah. Metaphysician. Mm -hmm. So you know, when you're like 14 and you're reading that in like '88, and there's no Google, there's no internet. You just get real curious about like, what, what is, is that position, right? And you spend like years trying to figure out what that is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now you just ask Siri, what's the <laughs> what is it? Real quick, you yeah. know. But that's what I'm saying. So years of just like incubating on, on concepts that I learned through hip hop and all all that stuff, just like meshing more in my 30s and stuff. You know. So you ask when did this start? That like the actual physical art and the handwritten word that was around 2010 ish and 11 and 12 and all those those three years right there were kind of pivotal they were kind of like a lot of change like personal you know stuff with girlfriends and mm -hmm. that stuff and uh so 2012 and 2012 was also you know rumored to be a thing mm -hmm. for all of us oh yeah you know the mean? whole destruction of the world and all yes. that shit yeah and i believe it was but on a metaphorical mm. it wasn't literal the world didn't end right. but i do believe that there was a big change right in 2012 in most of us mm -hmm. and i for better or for worse? For better, like more of an awakening in a sense, you know, just a, 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 an increase in consciousness, a slight a boost up mm -hmm. in consciousness and awareness and just uh, navigating our reality and stuff. And I am case in point. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. So around 2012, I started getting less involved with the poetry, less turned on by things that I was passionate about like I was hosting a lot of events I was running a magazine I was doing a lot of poetry I was doing a lot of artsy things but my desires just started to shift into a different type of art and started going visual I started just so I started thinking about when I was a kid and writing home with writing stuff small and just zoning out and nerding out and writing small and I was like I want to like do that again you know so I wrote real small on a yellow paper and yellow paper was totally my thing then and now and always has been that mm -hmm. that look that vibe is is mine yeah you know so uh 2010 i wrote a bunch of stuff on yellow paper and then f color photocopied it at kinko's with like the last dollars that i had like i remember like f for a second checking myself like am i crazy hmm. like am i insane because i have like zero dollars and i'm at kinko's spending like a hundred on a credit card to color photocopy like small stuff i wrote mm. you know what i mean it just seemed really <laughs> crazy like i was like i think i might be insane but that's what i'm saying like six years later i still have those exact pieces from that night that i sell when i'm out selling a lot of stuff you yeah. know and now it makes sense i'm like i was not crazy like <laughs> I just had a vision, but I didn't even see it. My, you know, sometimes you gotta like treat yourself the way you want other people to treat you. You know. Did you establish the value in your art? Did you determine how much you would sell a piece for, or when you like when you first started actually selling pieces? Yeah. Did you determine what it cost, or did somebody say, "I'll give you"? X amount for this and then from there well, you took Well, I mean, I guess it's always been a mix of the two. It's like I'm always doing my research mm -hmm. to figure out the fairest price to right. charge. Right. So that's based on my own concept of what's fair. It's based on my own knowledge of what went into it. 
time and materials right and then it's based on a little like research you know seeing what other artists are selling stuff for attending events seeing the type of price tags and getting a feel for the person and then yeah that is an art everything about art is an art, art you know displaying your art is an art promoting your art is an art pricing your art is an art like yeah. life is yeah. art and an artist can see that you know yeah uh, so i think um it. i've gotten i've gotten pretty good i would say at, at least i've been told at marketing myself yeah. social media things like that right and i don't know very many people who look at djing like an art form the way i do but i, I see it as art you know and basically like looking at a nightclub like it's a blank canvas looking at the songs i play like paint looking at the crowd you know and all of that and creating a memory an image you know throughout a two-hour set and because I'm so passionate about it, one of my issues has always been trying to set my price or my rate or my value comparable to others, but still not, you know, undercutting the market and not, you know, coming at a place like where somebody looks at me and be like, are you fucking crazy for charging this much? But when I go out and do my research and I go see other people play and I go, you know, ask people uh, in other cities what they get here, what they charge, things like that. And I'm like, damn, I'm really I've been undervaluing myself for a lot yeah. of years. And it's like it fuck it fucks with me psychologically because yeah. I could have been way further in my career had I yeah. charged more, you know, sooner. And, you know, uh, yeah, well, that's that's the wisdom setting in, you know, yeah. I've, I've had the same same exact thoughts but yeah you know what can you do about it now right it's 20 hindsight is 2020 so hindsight is 2020 there you are but yeah yeah step it up starting now yeah yeah but it, yeah it's an art itself but i feel you like you know artist to artist yeah i feel you and i think a lot of us do initially undervalue ourselves but i'm getting to a point now like well, I'm not doing that as much, you mm -hmm. know, I'm sticking to my guns as, as much as possible. That's what I'm trying to do, stick to my gun now, you know, <laughs> trying to make up for lost time. Yeah. Stick to my guns yeah. now, you know. Um, you used to rap, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess you could say that. <laughs> what was, uh, was your rap name Renda? Yeah. Well, Renda has always just been my name for everything. But I, I was always a poet and still am. And I guess, like, I got a tattoo. Oh, you know? it is, yeah. Tattoos are forever. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that's. Uh, I, I would never say I was a poet. You, you know? are a poet. I am a poet. No doubt. And, uh, you know, the tattoo is part of the, the reminder, part of that, the permanence of it. Right. So I am a poet and I always have been. But as I got into poetry, it was rap that got me into it, you know, like, like everything. Like I said, the answer to everything is either the universe or hip hop or yeah. whatever, you know. So in this case, the answer is, is hip hop. So hip hop got me into just words. Mm -hmm. And I always just felt like I, I've answered this before, like this way, like, I feel like if you listen to enough hip hop, you're going to start rapping yourself. Mm -hmm. Whether you take it all the way and it's your career mm -hmm. or you're just like rapping in the shower on the low and like nobody's even in the house. You right. know what I mean? But hearing good rap will inspire you. You will, you know, like who, whoever you are, yeah. you will start to think like, yo, what's it like? I could say a word that would rhyme with that <laughs> word. Yeah, and then it would sound like, you know, and who pick your favorite, you know, like whoever just inspired you to, to think that way. Yeah. You know, so um, yeah, so I started just with a deep appreciation for hip hop and I kinda like rapped a bit and when I moved to New York I was like very inspired by the, the presence of hip hop everywhere there. And uh, so I put out some CDs, but as I the other presence that was strong in New York was the spoken word mm. community and that was getting big at the time. And so I discovered that and I was like, that's me, you mm. know, like that's way more me than mm. being a rapper. Like I really don't even have rhythm, you know, I really can't like follow a beat very well, mm. but poetry, yeah, I can do that. Like create my own rhythms and yeah. change them nine times in the poem. I'll do that. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. So did you, as a spoken word artist, I'm assuming you perform your your material right yeah because you know there are a lot of poets they'll write but they'll never get on stage and actually yeah no i know. was not that i you know i would write record and perform right record and perform like and is this is this is here or this is in new york or this is both this is new york and florida and wherever there's a mic and a stage mm -hmm. you know yeah but i did a lot i did i got exposed early to that scene in new york mm -hmm. and like cut my teeth on the manhattan scene um 
some of the memorable like poetry spots like New Eurekan Poets Cafe I don't right. know if you heard of that right. but they've actually produced like some rappers too like Punchline and Wordsworth mm-hmm. um, Wordsworth wow. there and stuff yeah. and uh, Pumpkinhead and some other dudes that you might know but yeah. so um, rest in peace Pumpkinhead too yeah, yeah that's crazy yeah. and um, I was just talking because I knew a lot of those underground that was the time that I was there you know and I was just I met up with this dude in D.C. that new pumpkin head, and mm-hmm. I was like, "What did he die of again?" Yeah, and he yeah. told me, and now I forgot again. But yeah, anyways. Yeah. Um, so it was in New York, is where I cut my teeth, where I was doing it, where I was getting first exposed. New York Poets Cafe, Bowery Poetry Club, all these different spots in the village. Years of that, and then I came to Florida, and then I started attending some like Chunky's, you know, Chunky, right? Mm-mm. Uh, no, or you know, like Ingrid B. Ingrid B, yeah, that's yeah. that's like my sister right there. Yeah. yeah, so I went to like you were in the the Bohemia room. I went, uh, yeah, I went to that like once, and also the the one she did with Dead Prez, like oh, uh, Mellow Mondays. I performed that night, like the opening at Bluster night? at Bluster in Hollywood. No, this was before that. Before that, this was when she was at the district. Oh, this oh yeah oh this is like way this is yeah. like 06 or some shit like yeah. that yeah okay but he, and even before that so i just started attending a lot of poetry events some of ingrid some of chunkies and some of all different people all over broward all mm. over palm beach all over miami in like 2004 ish when i came back from new york and i was just recording and i was writing like crazy and um put out a few cds and and started hosting my own events and so then i then i got to a point where i was performing and hosting every night mm. like literally every night six nights a week damn i had for a year i had six nights booked and for like four years like one year in that four year period i was literally booked six nights a week and in that four year period i was booked like a four to five with little fluctuations you know wow. in terms of the events that i hosted and performed at and all that so have you seen a change in the the poetry scene in miami between then and now uh, well, I saw changes throughout, but in terms of the scene right now, I don't know if I really even know it. You yeah, know? it's like, like almost non-existent almost. I mean, and if it were, I wouldn't even know, you know, like if there, I'm sure there's some existent remnant of there's some spot. There's got to be some spot where people go yeah. and do poetry, but I, I don't know what it is. I'm such an artist now, like, or just so much more focused on that. Like I said, I still am a poet. Mm-hmm. Poetry, being a poet is a way of seeing life, you know, it's an outlook whether you perform at the and are aware of the latest open mics or not is mm-hmm. kind of irrelevant you know but um yeah my head is in the art now you know like i I've, it works it works more than anything i've ever done and i just feel good like you know all the time did you know that once you once you started like 2010 11 12 that you would be going around the world doing it did uh, you feel that did i know that no but did I start to develop an inclination and grow towards it? Yeah, hell right. yeah. Like that's, that's what you're supposed to do, man. Like envision it and step into it, you know, and, and, and follow the leans, follow the little symptoms, the little hints, the little ideas, the things that get you going, you know, but just, you know, I was talking off camera and I'm always talking about just serendipity, synchronicity, everything. These are clues. These are things you got to pay attention to. And then the more you pay attention to them, the more they happen. Mm-hmm. And then the more they're happening and the more you're paying attention to it, the more that becomes your life. Right. And then you have this life that's just filled with cool stuff. And I don't know about you, but that's the kind of life I want. I think that's the kind of life I have. And so I just... Uh, it always comes down to that like try it like uh, you know especially if someone's inspired by me like mm-hmm. someone watching this now or whatever you know like oh you do such cool stuff like how how do you do it well you start by just getting into like a serendipity mindset you know just feeling like everything is that yeah and then that's a start you yeah. know yeah. It, it definitely starts in the, in the mind everything does so but I don't know maybe that's a bit of a tangent but still, nah, that's, that's, that's spot on right there that's yeah, spot on <laughs> that's just that's how I see things you know and that's how things come about, all these things. And, um, you that, know, I was just saying, like, art art is my favorite thing I've done. It's not really to be compared against my time being a poet or any of that other stuff. It just is what it is. It's all a natural progression. But mm-hmm. I just can't emphasize enough, like, how much I just love, like, traveling and, and selling art and making art and just everything about it, you know? 
74 world peace murals yeah. around the world. Yeah. What's the most, what's the country or place that stands out the most thus far? Out of what I've done so far? Well, Italy was cool because I, I, did, I pulled an all-nighter. I did a really long wall. It was like 250 feet long. It wasn't wow. that tall, though, but it was like four or five feet. It was like a retainer wall against the beach. Mm. And I started at like 11 o'clock at night. And then after I did like two lines of the mural, they were like, come inside. We want you to do some of your poetry. And so this, this kind of <laughs> relates to what you were saying about like, you once rapped, right? Like on occasion, I guess I do. So... That you know, I was like, all right, but it's just like I really didn't want to. I wanted to focus on the mural, but it's all these like Italians. They're like, hey, come in, come <laughs> in, you know, do the poetry, yeah. And I'm like, all right, cool. So, but I go in and there's like the DJ and stuff, and it's, so it's like, it's I it's can the tell vibe. it's not gonna be the vibe where I can just like say my poems and they listen, you know. So then he puts on like a beat, and I'm like, oh, all right, so I'm rapping. <laughs> so I just like did my poetry in, in a more rap format you yeah. know and i did like a 20 minute set of just like Damn. killing it like running through everything i had in my head and like on beat and everyone is filming and i'm just like looking in the crowd at this like sea of phones and then i just you know wrapped it up and then went back out to the mural and just finished and then <laughs> worked in, you know on that like laid and then worked on that until like 7 a.m. when the sun came up and the sun was coming up right as I was finishing and I signed my name and I shot some video and then I jumped in the ocean. Damn. So that was kind of cool. But they're all good. They're, they're all like that. You know, every, every mural, like today's mural even, you know what I mean? Like, okay, it's not the most exotic place. I'm just in Overtown, Miami, but every mural is like, I can see there's a story about it. There's, yeah. a, there's a thing, there's an arc. Yeah. You know, I got there and you know, I was nervous. I was told everyone I'd be there at two. I got there at like two twenty, and then, you know, I knew there was rain in the forecast. I was trying to not pay attention too much to it, and then it mm -hmm. did rain, and my friend Mike showed up. Uh, you know what I mean? Like just, yeah. There's always a thing. Yeah. It's just the adventure of of life. But yeah. that was one, and then doing the one on the Mexico border wall was also pretty darn cool. But I don't know. I always feel like my favorite mural is my next mural, you know, mm -hmm. or my favorite mural is my last mural or, you know, however you want to phrase it, whichever is wittier. But, you know, the point is I just value them all, you know, like yeah. I just value doing it. I appreciate doing it. The, I appreciate the pictures that come after and just the grind and the hustle that leads me from one mural to the next, to the next, to the next, um, because they don't stay up, you mm -hmm. know, they're, they're not. They're not permanent. I mean, well, some places maybe. Some are, yeah. You yeah. know, there's everyone is different, but some due to uh, whatever forces might be gone in a week or yeah. vandalized or right. whatever. You know. Yeah. I did a huge mural. That took, like this was a serendipitous day. I did this huge mural in Dania Beach, and um, then I went straight from Dania Beach up to West Palm Beach to see Nice and Smooth perform <laughs> to get a picture of them with my art. Yeah. And. Then like they came out and they had this little like stage and then behind the stage was like a box truck. Mm -hmm. So it created like a white background. And then I said to my friend Stevie D who like kind of had a hand in bringing them there. Like, yo, what's up with that box truck? Like it's just going to be plain white behind them. You know, and he knows what I'm getting at. <laughs> and, he, uh, and I'm like, what's up? And he's like, I can introduce you to the guy that owns the truck. Uh. And he's like, come with me. And then he brings me over to this guy. And then he's like, this is my friend Brandon, Jamie Lee Curtis just posted up his art which was true jamie lee curtis wow. you know uh, saw my art in la and posted it on instagram so he's talking about me like that right, you know right. jamie lee curtis just posted up his art young yeah, he's a big fan nice can he write nice and smooth you know like just and the guy's like yeah go ahead <laughs> so then i just wrote nice and smooth over and over on the truck and they performed right in front of it oh shit you know? and this is all in one day like i wake up I, I do a mural for 10 hours i drive an hour i do a backdrop for a group that i grew up listening to i get a picture of them holding my art Damn. you know and this is all in a day and then a few months later i drive by that same mural and it's gone and uh, i text the owner yeah what happened what to happened? The mural? oh the city of Daniel beach was trying to find me and stuff and they said i needed permits and for a truck that he owned that like you know you can't take the memory from me yeah. you can't take the photos right and you can't take the drive that pushes me to do another one yeah tomorrow yeah. you know the yeah. next day every day yeah every day that's how it should be seen too you know like sometimes people say to me they're like you know they see me on social media or something like that and then they meet me in person and they're like man you're like 
you're on it, man. You're like every day, like every day doing something, you know? And so I get it. They're complimenting me and I, I can take a compliment. And you know, so I, I usually thank them and stuff. But you also gotta think about it like this, like if it's your job, you're supposed to do it every day. Right. You know what I mean? Like when people compliment you on the everydayness of it, I'm like, the everydayness of it is the key. It's the like point. <laughs> you know, this is my job. Right. So I do it every day. Like, and you know, so I get it. I'm not I'm not dissing them and I'm not saying that I'm not grateful for that kind of compliment or yeah. that kind of interaction. But I, I think it's, I actually value it more because I see how like weird it is to them right. because they're in some other kind of a lifestyle where seeing me grind and do big projects and things every single day kind of blows their mind. Yeah, they're like, damn. But like, the thing is, uh, it's all perspective because I can get my mind blown when I look at their life and I'm like, you go to work every day. Like every day you just wake up and then you just go and you sit at this desk yeah. and you just, you just every day you do that rush every rush day? hour every day Seriously? going coming home yeah yeah and like and you just and you see the same people every day like it's like the office the show like <laughs> you know so yeah. it's relative yeah there's no right or wrong right right there's right. no right or right. wrong there's no one way but i enjoy being an artist you know and like that's why i'm here you're, interviewing yeah. me, you're not interviewing me because i work some desk job <laughs> years, you know? that's a fact that's a fact yeah. um when i listen to beats right or when producers send me beats it's a process, right? I'll either spend a, a, a you know good deal of time listening to the beat, trying to catch a vibe to it, or something to hit me instantly, and then the song gets created. Is it like that with you, with the walls and the places that you do your art? Like, have you ever gone somewhere, saw a, a space, a wall, a backdrop, and said, "Oh, I have to do something here"? Like, does it hit you like that? Has it ever hit you like that? Yeah, I mean. Um Almost every mural that I do hits me fairly like easily, you know, mm -hmm. like almost every wall is essentially a freestyle mm -hmm. and it's just me kind of um, juggling the variables, you know, like how much paint do I have? How uh, much do I have of that color? How much do I have of that color? Right. How much sunlight do I have? You know, how hot is it? How much water do I have? How mm -hmm. much weed do I have? Mm -hmm. Like. Um, just did they ask me to include anything you know who is they the people behind the wall did they ask me to include something like just all these things and you know I just kind of like you know and if I start writing this big can I keep that size like a million variables are just factored in some sort of Tetris fashion in my brain and, and um, out comes a mural yeah you know but but I pretty much freestyle it, but I feel it like I let it talk to me. And especially if I'm doing something that's like linear, like the world peace mural that I did today and that I often do, you know, it's linear, it's straight lines, it's mm -hmm. horizontal lines that has a certain vibe to it. Then when I do love and I write the word love in uh, various shapes and directions and stuff yeah. that has a different vibe and there's a different lesson inherent in it for me, the artist, as well as possibly for the viewer. But so when I do love, there's there's no right or wrong, there's no mistakes. I'm, uh, it's totally totally freestyle, but with some added thought. Mm -hmm. Like just like if, in, with the way a rapper freestyles, they'll freestyle, but they'll incorporate. They think, yeah, they think, yeah, of, like, of course. On Tuesday night, I thought, like, yeah, <laughs> and I, I just pulled it out. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, so there's that. Like when I do a love mural, I'm largely freestyling, but then I kind of look at it for a second layer and I'm like, okay, but now that I'm looking at it more consciously, mm -hmm. can I add some color here? Can I start a thing going where I add the yellow here on the left side of every word, you know, things yeah. like that. So it's a mix. And then when I'm doing the linear ones, that one is very much like I get a lot out of it mm -hmm. because I don't want to get too deep, but you know, nah, yeah. get deep, man. Okay. Like, yeah. And I think you can handle it, but you know, everything is in life is patterns you know like i don't know if you agree or if you've seen that yourself or whatnot but everything in life is patterns everything is cyclical you know if you just look at the seasons we have winter spring summer fall and then winter spring summer fall you Cycles. Know? And then, yeah. yeah so it's just and there's a death in the winter and there's a rebirth in the spring and there's a flourishing in the spring and the summer and there's an intensity in the summer and you know and there's just there's just patterns and there's there's cycles in everything, whether you're looking to nature or you're looking to math or you're looking to art or you're looking at the sacred geometry, which is the ultimate. You know, you look at a, a, a turtle and its shell and you see the Fibonacci code in it and you see. So 
that, that's the depth of that, the, the truth of the pattern presence in everything. Mm -hmm. And so I get that in my art too. I kind of let, if I'm writing in a linear fashion in straight lines and I'm alternating the colors, it's going to create a pattern. Right. And I don't know what that pattern is until I'm maybe two or three lines in. And then I see how many lines in I have to be in order to catch on to the pattern. Mm -hmm. And then once I've caught on to it, I can use it as like a system of checks and balances. Like I, as I continue, I can make sure I'm in sync with the pattern and that allows me to not make a mistake. You know what see, I mean? See, I was going to ask you because I've always been amazed at First of all, the, 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 the process of painting anything, especially with spray paint. Yeah. Have you ever made a mistake on a mural? Yeah. And then and when you do make a mistake, like how do you, how do you fix it? Because it's spray well, paint, like does it wash off? Like that's, I'm always amazed by that. It shit. depends on what kind of mistake we're talking about because there's all kinds. Like if I, if I make a letter, but it kind of accidentally looks like some other letter, I might be able to just fix it real quick in the moment, you know, mm -hmm. and like add a little something on this side. Now that A just became an O, you know, or gotcha, whatever. Gotcha. It, but if I like write the wrong word, you know, then sometimes I might, if I'm lucky, have some of the base paint to uh, just to go erase, it, erase it. Essentially, it. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, every. Again, it's a metaphor, just like in life. You make all kinds of mistakes. Some are big mistakes, some are little mistakes. Some seem irreparable, some seem that way, and then later you realize they weren't, you know, yeah. and you handle them all differently. Right. But you will handle them all as you. You know, you have a general method for approaching and learning from, hopefully, mistakes, right? Yeah. yeah. So, it's always a metaphor, especially with art. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's... So that's like when I, when I approach a wall to do a mural, it's almost like, okay, this wall equals my life. Mm. You know, that's where the metaphor is. Yeah, yeah. Now I start at the top, like I'm, burnt, I'm born and I'm just doing my best. You know, like I'm just a baby. I need a little help maybe, you know? So I'm just doing my best, but you see I'm living in it and it, each day or year or month or whatever is the line or the series of lines. It doesn't matter how like precise the metaphor is, but yeah. the point is that it's like, you're just, when I do a mural, some people compliment me and say it's perfect or whatever. And it's like, the truth is it's not perfect. It's just my best attempt at something close to perfection. I know it ain't perfect, right. you know, and I'm certainly not striving for that. I'm just doing my best, just like we do in life. You're just doing you your, best. Do your best. And yeah. you're hopefully learning as you go, like from the patterns you see in your life. And so that's the same with my mural. Like if I'm on line 12 and I notice, I notice that it's on like this, four line repetition, then line 12 is the same as line eight. So I can look back to line eight for guidance, just like you could look back in your life yeah. for guidance, talk right. to the young you, right. you know what I mean? And now because I know the pattern, I know how this is gonna play out and I know I can change, you know, like the metaphor, like I can change, yeah. I can create, you know, like I can, whatever, I'm a, an addict can change or this or that, you know, so. It's you weird, like, see, I, I, I'm into this. I don't know you personally, but the shit that you're saying is the way that I think. Yeah. But I don't know anyone else really in my personal life that I could have a conversation like this with and them not look at me like I'm fucking crazy. So right. it's, it's weird for me sitting here listening to you say all this because I'm like, fuck, like, that's how I think. It's how, and maybe because I'm getting older, wiser, hopefully. I think I'm getting wiser. Yeah. And my perspective on life is changing you know but the more experiences i have in life like it's I, you're seeing yeah. a lot of shit that, that growing older is kind of cool growing older yeah. and gaining wisdom if you're doing it right like if you're not doing it right then it's just uh you just you're just going through the motions i guess you know but i enjoy i enjoy the process you know like the 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 obtaining of wisdom yeah and just using your life as the example in the lives of others and just you know, getting knowledge like that. This is all shit I learned from hip hop, you know, yeah. because I grew up on the golden era where they emphasized knowledge, like knowledge was cool. 100%. You know, 100%. That, was, that was cool. Made yeah. me want to like read and stuff. Yeah. And the internet wasn't even available, you know what I mean? So I would go to the library, check out books, Yeah. you know, just read them. I'm like, I don't know, I'm just doing what Brand Nubian did, you know what I mean? Like I was young and impressionable, just like, Kids now, I'd be like, I don't know, I just pour this codeine in the cup and I just, you know, drink yeah. it. The next thing I know, I'm like, ah, what? <laughs> you know, like, I don't know what they say. Yeah. But, you know, um, yeah. yeah the, thing, so. the thing that's fucked up, I mean, to me with hip hop now, it's like now they've almost made it like it's, it's uncool to be wise 
number one, it's uncool to be wise or intelligent. It's uncool to age and mature and get older in it. And I feel like it's the only genre of music that does that shit. It's the only one that looks down upon yeah. wisdom and, and, and aging and being an elder in it. And I, you know, that, that, that hurts me to the heart with that shit. Well, I mean, you see how I see things. Everything is a metaphor. And I was thinking about this earlier today. Like, hip hop is like a person, you know? And so people go through phases in their life, you know? And, you, you know, your awkward teenage years. Oh, because I was, I guess I, uh, I was hearing, um, like, I was thinking about that's what Common did with I Used to Love Her. And mm. then, like, the, right? He had, like, a remix and he had, like, a sequel. But the whole, yeah. like, I Used to Love Her series right. is him personifying hip hop as a woman, you know? And, like, right. you look at it like that, like, it makes sense. Like, oh, okay, you had to go to the West Coast. You know, like, look at it like, like as a person, you're just going through your changes. You're yeah. just living your life. Yeah. Okay, you did your Puff Daddy phase. That was, like, you know, like, the, you can equate that to whatever. Oh, right. like, that was, like, when you were young, dumb, full of cum, you were in high school, yeah. you know, or whatever. But, yeah. So, hopefully, we're coming around. We're going to get to that, like, I mean, you, if you look at the genre, it's roughly 40 years old, yeah, you know? Right. But maybe those years, it's like dog years, you know, it doesn't like go one for one. Yeah. So maybe that 40 years that the genre has been around makes it like a 19-year-old person. Right. You know? Right. It's like a 19-year-old girl right now or something. Man. I'm know. hoping it I'm hoping it comes. I mean, I, I, I kind of feel like there are pockets of, of lyricism that are coming back, that are getting appreciated, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, for an artist like myself, I refuse to conform. You know, to to dumbing down what it is that I do because I still hold lyricism in a high regard because of the importance of words yeah. and how you can you know teach or school or educate you know not only your peers but those you know coming coming after you. So you know, but it's it's scary, it's scary right now, man. It's scary just to see the direction that has been going and and what's become the popular right. Style. But popular, you know, people are always going to have an issue with what's popular, and that's part of it being popular. But luckily, nothing will ever die now because everything is too vast, like because of the internet. Like every genre of music, every genre of art, everything, everything that you could delve into, every hobby, hobby, uh, you can go in all the way mm -hmm. because of the internet. Right. And so now, like, whereas everything used to be through a funnel mm -hmm. you know like you had to go through the major media outlets the big seven or whatever to yeah. get your word out right and so like when you use hip-hop as an example hip-hop used to be just the stuff we saw on rap city right and on mtv raps just the stuff that was available at our local mall mm -hmm. at like peaches or specs or yeah. camelot or whatever <laughs> Damn, you know what i mean so a whole genre and all genres had a fit to you know rock and roll all them but now it's just the internet so like hip-hop will never die there will always be people that are spitting that raw super lyrical lyrical stuff yeah. somewhere in the world and somewhere. uploading it somewhere on somewhere the internet. yeah and you know for every one of those guys there's also a mumble rapper there's also <laughs> there's like there's everything you yeah know, just it's everything. the balance of life you have to have yeah. the good with the bad and now, and yeah. now you have access to all of it you know mm -hmm. it wasn't like well my scope of, of what I can grab and call good and what I can grab and call bad you know only comes from a pie this big right like in the 80s but now it just comes from infinity yeah. like what do you want? Creating your own reality. Yeah. In terms of music, in terms of everything, you know, like politics. Like I know this is an unsteady time, and like nobody really likes Trump and stuff. But you could just not pay attention to that right. at all. You know, that's at why. All. Like I personally have never posted anything about him on my social media ever because I'm like, wow, I don't give a fuck about him. Why would I even do it? I'm yeah. not even gonna give it that and my energy. Yeah. I'm not even gonna do that. Yeah, I get it. I Understanding guess. energy is just the main thing. Yeah. You know, I like I watch a, I like being interviewed and I like watching interviews. Mm -hmm. I love watching interviews, yeah. you know, and I love whenever I watch an interview and someone brings up like energy. Like a lot of rappers and stuff, you know, especially like a lot of rappers are much smarter than they um might appear in their music it's mm -hmm. uh, that's why i like watching interviews i'm like okay i've heard this guy's music now i want to hear him talk talk I right hear his mind right and stuff you know right but i feel like entertainers period are really cognizant of that idea of energy yeah. you know like even just when they say it in passing like all right you know they're on the, the stage all right we gotta get the energy up you mm -hmm. know what i mean and they say something but like when you pause like oh man they just said energy like that that's my key word, you know, mm -hmm. like that's it. Life is energy, yeah. everything, you know. Yeah. But yes, when your job is to rock a crowd or or even if you're just like a comedian or you're doing anything with a crowd manipulation, you, you better understand 
energy Hell you know yeah. that's group energy and then individual yeah. energy and stuff but everything is just yeah energy it's, it's, it's the reason why i'll tell like if i'm djing in certain places like the dj booth i have to have it near the crowd yeah because I, so i can feel the energy of the people and yeah. then they can feel mine and it's a constant exchange back yeah, and I know forth there are probably some venues where they got it like high up and some where well, i can name me three right now as well yeah. and i'm like I'm, i don't even want to play there because i'm, I'm not going to be able to do my job at the best of my ability just because of the location of the booth yeah because i don't have anything to yeah. pull from or give to what when i was heavier on the poetry i performed at the apollo and i was like okay the apollo this is great but here's what it's like to perform at the apollo like it's just blackness like you, you don't see anything. You don't see anything? Nothing. Like, it's just like going in a little room this big and turning all the lights out and then doing your poem. But you just know that in that blackness is like a couple thousand people. Mm. You know what I mean? But the way the lights are and whatnot, because those big places, that's yeah. how it is. You, get, you could be in, like in the middle of the stage and look out and you literally just see black. And you got to like look kind of close at, or get to the foot of the stage to see that there's actual humans people there. People there, damn. But so... Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know what to make of that. Like, does that make it easier? Does that make it harder? I just know that wasn't what I expected. Yeah. But in a way, it made it harder. Yeah. Because you need that. You need to know there's yeah. people. Like, because I'm on the stage at the Apollo and I'm like, wow, I could look totally be like in my bathroom right now. Like, right. this is the same thing. Right. Because what are you feeding off of? You don't know. You, yeah. you can't tell. You can't gauge what you're doing if you can't see anybody. Yeah. Yeah. So it's energy, man. Everything in life is. But artists and entertainers, you know, tend to latch on to that you know yeah but i'm just into that and I, you know yeah aging and just growing like i like to watch interviews like uh like i was saying like in podcasts like the joe rogan podcast uh -huh. if you watch that and stuff yeah. but i think we have gotten into a a new era mm -hmm. <clears throat> of consciousness Con and whatnot yeah. yeah and it has a lot to do with the internet because it makes everything totally available. accessible yeah, yeah it's all right there yeah i don't even like to type stuff anymore i'm just i totally as Siri for everything. Mm -hmm. It's small stuff. Open Instagram. I'd rather say open Instagram than look at my phone and, and go press the button and yeah. Yeah. Uh. Like little things like that. Open photos. I didn't open, even know you could do that shit. I this is, I love talking <laughs> about this and now I'm you know saying it to your viewers, but there is so much you can do with Siri that you didn't know. Like you could be like, um, open photos from October. Oh right? shit, I'm about to <laughs> open photos from Tennessee. You could do Damn. so much stuff like that, like open my contacts, just little things that might save you like a second or two, little yeah. life hacks. Right. And I, yes. Life I, hacks. That's what, yeah, yeah. that's a life, major life hack. I was in Tampa recently and I got into this random conversation with a guy at a, a Kava bar and I was blowing his mind with the, with the Siri stuff. And I was like, dude, you could just say, like, talk to her like a person, like she's smart. She can get it. You could say, um, remind me to text John at three. And you can just do that. And she'll go, okay, I will remind you of three to text John. Wow. And you're like, thanks, man. That's awesome. Damn, damn. But yeah, or set, setting my alarm. Yeah. You know how long it took? They flip through and they find, and find it. <laughs> Dude, that takes me like over a minute. Yeah. I just go set alarm, 7.06 a.m., you know? Damn. I always set it for weird times. But I was yeah, my, yeah, my alarm was set for 8.47. And when I was in Portland, I said, weed near me. And she goes, I found 10 dispensaries. Oh, shit. All within walking distance. Okay, Siri. Yeah. So you see what I mean? There's yeah. a lot. But yes, I'm glad I got to share that with you and with you guys. Like, yeah, just stuff like that to save a few seconds. Open Instagram or open Facebook or um, open my email. Like tiny yeah. things like that. Damn. In this high-paced world, we, we like, yeah. need stuff like yeah. that. Damn. Think about how like, hmm. nerdy and futuristic that is. Like, wow, thanks for telling me that I can save... Uh, a half a second every time I open an app, but like Shit, that is, as much I, as I'm on Instagram, kind of yeah. we want these days. Yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, hey, talk to me about uh, your comfort zone will kill you. What's I the will. what's the premise behind that? Well, your comfort zone will kill you. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm an artist, but first I'm a poet, so I, I like to I like to really every piece of art, every saying, I like to really just say, well, it's poetry and. Therefore, I don't need to explain it. <laughs> no, but uh, well, part of that is kind of true. But also, if I were to explain it, um, you know, I had a, I mean, there's a few like origins, and I guess I'll give you kind of all of them real quick. But like around 2012 and 13, I was coming up with a lot of stuff, 
mm-hmm. in my mind. A lot of stuff had just changed in my life and it got my mind going and everything was like, I was just on inspiration mode all the time. And I was inspiration mode mixed with like joker mode. I, was, I had like a group of friends and we would just joke around all the time. Yeah. Everything was just an inside joke. And I got into like using the word everything. And I like, I was cracking myself up, cracking myself up. That was the key. Like I was just trying to make myself laugh and it was working, but it was also, there was depth in it because when you get deep into philosophy, you notice how much the word everything is used. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is almost a synonym for God Mm -hmm. or for love or any of these bigger words. You know, some people say God is love. I'm sure you've heard that, right? So if if God is love and and then you've heard other people say, well, love is everything. Okay, so then love God, everything, all the same. You see what I mean? So. And I just got on this like trip, like in t- like almost all of 2012 and 13 was just me hanging out with some dudes and just like goofing off and saying the word everything a lot. And then like going up to people we didn't know, I'd be like, yo, can I ask you a question about everything? Um, what do you think about like everything? And like the fact that everything is like kind of connected to like everything else. And you know, when you think about everything, like do you ever, do you ever, you ever just like, like you try to think about one thing but then you all of a sudden you're thinking about everything and you're like, wow, this is everything. Yeah. You know, and I'm just like goof around and like yeah. trying to make them laugh and making myself laugh. But at the same time, I think I was really uncovering like a creative genius inside of this attention seeking pursuit of laughter, you know? Mm. And so I was just doing a lot of that. But that was some of where I was at in 2012 and 13. But like that was a part of it. But overall, it was a lot of just searching for inspiration, like mining my life, my humor, my memories and recollections. And I remember my coach when I ran cross country, I ran cross country in high school. Uh I wasn't even that good, but I ran. And I ran track and I was really not good. (laughs) And and I ran anyway. Uh, But I just remember my coach on the sideline yelling out, get out of your comfort zone, get out of your comfort zone. Like yelling that at us as we walked walked by. But, so yes, I kind of like was drawing on that memory mm. one night, one fateful night in like 2012. I was thinking about that, but then I was also thinking about this too, and this is like the other side of the origin. Like there was something, all right, I know this sounds vague, there was something I was thinking about, some sort of a trait that people exhibit. And I was like, because th- I think there was someone more vague, but there was someone in my life that I noticed they took this side of the trait when they could have taken that mm-hmm. other side. And I was like, I was thinking about like humility and like ego Uh and I was like in my head this is just kind of like a conversation in my head that's why it doesn't really make sense coming out here but I was like just thinking like man you know like your humility could like get you killed and I was like but your ego could get you killed too you know I just was thinking about that like and then I was thinking about the literal death literal killing Mm -hmm. and then thinking about that spectrum of where to be humble to ego right and and then i was like your humility could get you killed your ego can too and i was like that's dope but you know i need something shorter you know and then i and then i was thinking about my coach and then boom your comfort zone will kill kill you you know yeah and then i wrote it on this big piece of cardboard and i hung it up on this telephone pole in winwood and then I started doing other things with it and then it kind of like went viral and I've done a lot of murals that say that and I've done t-shirts and I'm, I might not have made it up. See, here's the thing, like <laughs> this is the way consciousness works. You just asked me how I came up with it. That is how I came up with it. Right. But then I also like now in the internet age and you search for whatever phrase, hashtag that, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? To like search its origins yeah. and who else is using it. Yeah. You know, once I got hip to that, that I could like research my own sayings, I realized there was like documented proof of someone saying your comfort zone will kill you kind of like before me. Mm-hmm. But what could I do about that? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that, I did come up with it. It came from my brain. Right. But we all have brains, you know, and like, I, I guess, you, I, I don't know how concrete my point is, but you get my point, yeah, right? Yeah. Even if I'm not expressing it right, it's just no idea is original and everything comes from the same place, the same collective consciousness, you know, and, right. and um, point is though, to be more specific, I am the one that put that phrase on the map. Exactly. There you sure. go. There you go. So and now, and that's what's most important. So now there's a, like an association. Right. Render yeah. writer, your comfort zone will kill you. Right. Same is true with love is a risk, do it anyway. 
my other hit single yeah. you know a lot of times that's the metaphor it's like music you yeah. know so i have like some hit singles that people know mm -hmm. but i got b-sides like crazy you know <laughs> what i mean like i got a whole album my yeah. whole life is an album your cover song will kill you and love is a risk do it anyway or you know two hits yeah and the world peace mural tour and you know the love murals and i keep stumbling upon new hits mm -hmm. and recycling them and whatnot but it all comes from the general mining of just practicing the craft, you know? Both of those those sayings, they kind of, they make me think of um, of the author Robert Greene, uh, you know, 40 Laws of Power author. Yeah. And in the book that he did with 50 Cent called The 50th Law, um, there's a, a, a an excerpt where he says basically uh, verbatim, life rewards the risk takers. Mm -hmm. And in the moment when you feel most apprehensive, most afraid to take that, that leap of faith, that's the exact moment when you should step out of your comfort zone when you should go after that thing that you've been overthinking worried about i shouldn't do it i don't have enough money how am i going to survive blah 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 blah. Yeah. and i've tried to kind of live by that as far as you know pursuing my passion and not worrying about the basic fundamentals and logistics of life and just going after tunnel vision towards a, a goal and a path yeah. and there have been things that have suffered you know relationships jobs family you know all because of this pursuit of, of greatness, or yeah. at least being the best up to my ability. And, and I just don't know any other way how to be except that, you know, diligent, straightforward, take no, not taking no for an answer, you know, risk taker mentality. Yeah, yeah, it's like, um, sometimes you gotta leap and then the net will appear. You ever heard of that? Like, yes. I heard that like years yeah. ago, but then it came up again recently, and I was like, oh, I needed to hear that again. <laughs> yeah, that's totally what it is. Yeah. But yeah, man, you know, the risk taker is always rewarded. And obviously, a dude like 50 Cent knows, right. you know, and um, the 48 Laws of Power guy, they know. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. I watch a lot of interviews. Like, they're, in this information age, it's like, uh, if you want to make a, let's say you want to make a million dollars, just like a real basic goal. You want to make a million dollars. Okay. Well, now let's just break this down like real common sense wise. How about you listen to someone that has made a million dollars? Where can I meet them? On the internet. Right. You, know I mean? like, <laughs> you get just the, and that's the other thing. Like most of my conversations just, usually just come down to like praising the internet yeah. because what is the internet? It's just this amazing thing that it connects us to everything. But now here's the crazy, sh the, like the crazy part, like uh, there, it connects us to literally everything and now we have it on our phone, mm -hmm. but yet we pretty much do the same four or five things. We don't really use the internet for what it's really all What it can for. do, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Even those simple Siri commands that I told you and any everyone that I've told that to, it like blew their mind. Yeah. But I'm like, I know it's kind of mind blowing, but did you also notice it's also like real simple? You know what I mean? like, <laughs> right. And that's how so much stuff is. But yeah, I mean the internet, like you could, like basic things like, uh, okay, so I travel a lot and I do murals and you know, I'm a traveling artist. And uh, so like, I just kind of give this for free, like a, a technique I use, but I've told this to people and to me it seems common sense, but I've watched people go like, oh my God, when I tell them, but it's like, okay, so with me, for instance, if I know I'm going to St. Louis, mm -hmm. then I'll go on Instagram and I will follow a hashtag St. Louis uh. to prep myself a bit now i'm tailoring my feed so it's st louis oriented even though i'm in miami at the moment right. i'm building up to go to st louis so to me that just seems kind of like common sense but there are some people that are like oh my god you know and that blows their mind but that's okay like it's not a, it's not about ego it's not about me saying well this comes naturally to me and you, you are shocked so i must be smarter you know hmm. it's definitely not about that what it is about though is that the the, the, the deepest things and the most common sense things can all be done through the internet. Like just try and think a little more common sense and try and think about like how can the internet help me to like literally achieve my dreams, right. like the biggest of dreams, yeah. you know? And whatever, segue, the hip hop piece. And I know that's kind of the part of the reason I'm here is something you connected with in terms of my art. So now I've gotten pictures with like 25 MCs at least. I don't know, I haven't really counted them, but so now I'm looking at it like a game, like, and it's all coming through the internet mm -hmm. and the universe. Yeah. Like, uh, 
just the internet in the most basic way, way like oh evidence from dilated peoples i just found him on instagram let me send him a message right send him a message see what happens right then there's other rappers i met that had nothing to do with the internet really it was more like syncing up with energy waves and people yeah. and whatnot yeah. you know but um now i'm seeing that like okay ll cool j snoop dogg eminem 50 cent Dr. Dre, these are the top, top guys, you know, and I'm not really talking about like my opinion or lyrics or whatever, but they're the ones that are like the most pop, like they, they are much bigger than hip hop. Mm -hmm. Like my grandmother, you know what I mean? And right. your grandmother Little has heard, dog. you know, like yeah, that. Of course. So that's a good measure, you yeah. know? <laughs> so I want to get up to those guys and it's just now like a fun game because anytime I hit up a rapper, I send them pictures of other rappers. There you go. Val it's like validation, yeah. Like, oh, that's my man. Yeah. I was here. you know. Yeah. So I, I, ta I, I tap them that way. You yeah, know? smart. And smart. so that's what I'm saying. By the time I get to Eminem, if we use him as an example, because in a way he is kind of like in that respect, he's kind of like top. On yeah. That, you know, yeah. like pop, top, pop, pop, top. Dude. Yeah. yeah. So, but he's a crazy hip hop head. He of really respects the culture, and he, I, you could tell he's a hip hop nerd. Yeah which clearly I am. So that's how I feel like I'm gonna get to him. Right. By riding that frequency, like, okay, he's a big famous dude and stuff, he's in Michigan, and I'm like that, blah, blah. But really, in terms of vibrations, energy, we're the same guy yeah. in a way, you know what I mean? We come from that same energy, that appreciation, that nerdiness, and I wrote all these names and I write, and he, and then I remember he writes like that too. Remember like when he was on the bus, mm -hmm. and eight mile, like, yeah. you know, like, so I, there's like already this feeling like, we're like the same, man. I just gotta ride that vi vibration yeah. and get to him. And I just know that, you know, and then you think about it, there's the logical side, there's all like the metaphysical stuff, right? Then there's logical side. Okay, well, we all know who's Eminem's manager, Paul Rosenberg, Paul Rosenberg. you know? He's on Instagram, Paul sure Rosenberg. Is. Yep. He, and he, you know what I mean? Like, he so checks he his DMs like everybody else. Like Paul yeah. Rosenberg. Mm -hmm. and, and now Paul Rosenberg knows hip hop too. So if I send him a picture of uh, Chip Fru from the Food Snickers and all three guys from Brand Nubian and two guys from De La Soul and Wyclef, and it, you see what I mean? So yeah. stay tuned. Right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but it's, it's fun, man. It's just like a fun journey. And I was not even thinking along those lines when I made the When you made that. When I made it, I was like, okay, I'm going to sell it. And for some, Usually that kind of thought would come to me right away. But the thought of like getting it to the rappers yeah. did not come to me for a while. But I was, that's kind of a story. But you know the guy that sprays protect your heart on the street? You've mm -hmm. seen that? Yeah, I've seen so it. So that's my boy Uncut. And he was down here. And I was driving. And, uh, he was in my van. And then I said something about my hip hop piece. And I think, and then I was like, yeah, I'd like to maybe get a picture with like one of the artists or something. And then he was like, hey, hold on a minute. And then he made a phone call. And he's like one of those dudes that'll just make a phone call in front of you. All of a sudden they're talking on the phone and you're like, wait, are you talking to me or what? You know? So he's just in my car and he was like, hey, ha, what up? Like you said, like, ha. Mm. So I'm like, all right, he's talking to some guy, ha. You know? And then he's saying, something to him and then he hung up and then he was like that was Hakeem from Channel Live Channel Live <laughs> and I was like you know Hakeem from Channel Live yeah. and I'm like so he lives in Florida and he's like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. so can I give him a poster to him and he was like yeah so then you know a few Damn. days later via him I went to Hakeem's house and I took a picture of him holding the art so dope and that was the first artist I got and I was like oh I'm onto something you know like okay so Hakeem was like accessible reachable it came to me through the universe through uncut it was timing. He mentioned that while in my van. He called Hakeem. He happened to be in Florida, right? You know, and now I got this picture, like this one guy with my art, you know? Yeah. So now how did I turn that into like 30 pictures, you know, and like Grammy Award winners? By going from going there, through, you know, yeah. from that energy, like from starting there. The reason that, that that piece, I mean, there's a couple reasons why that piece is, is special to me. Um, for one, because I think I've actually like listened to every single artist on that piece yeah yeah since going yeah. back to 88 since i started listening to hip-hop like i don't think there's anyone on there that i have not listened to their music in some way you know at some point right number one and then number two as 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 a nerd hip-hop you know myself and i was like damn it would be so dope if and this is before knowing the degrees of separation between us yeah i was like damn it'd be so i have this piece sitting in my bedroom what if like i could get rendered to like write one of my lyrics on a piece of poster or something and then I could frame that shit and then I could have like, I don't know if you've ever done it for anyone else before, like another I've artist. I've done stuff like that, done yeah. stuff like that? Yeah. I've, done, I've written, um, 
lyrics like for independent artists that I wrote and like big name lyrics for a person wow. you know yeah like uh, a guy like had a special song with his girlfriend I, I wrote those lyrics uh, but it was like you know a famous group I can't remember now but yeah, yeah I do that I could do that for you and um, I love doing custom stuff that'd be dope I, dro- I did a piece that I drove to New Jersey just to drop it off basically wow and manifested all other stuff along the route uh, right impetus in driving was it's going to be big and I'd rather just drive it there than mail it uh and so that's what I did, but I incorporated this woman's that. names of all of her family into the art. Oh, okay. But yeah, dope. Did you uh, did you finish the piece in uh, in Overtown at the House of Wings? Did yeah. You, you got you got it done. Yeah, that's why I was late. I wanna uh, <laughs> I want I wanna go over there and check it out. You wanna head over there and check it out? Uh, yeah. Can, can we do that? Yeah. Man, I appreciate this, man. This is uh. It's thrilling for me. It's thrilling for me from one hip hop nerd, you know, to the next. It's an honor to sit here with you and and, and just man. just listen the to you, man. Conversation. Yeah, because it's. Because of the internet and phones and everything, people don't know how to actually talk yeah. to one another nowadays, which is, I guess, the one of the only setbacks and downfalls of living in such a technologically advanced time period. Well, that's what's interesting is we kind of forgot how to talk, so we just watch other people do it. Yeah. Like, that's why podcasts are uh, interesting, because it's like, oh, okay, like, people can lonely actually- people, you know, like, <laughs> people that have no, none of that, they, they can listen to other people talk and be like, yeah. look, that's how smart people sound when they talk right. to each other right you know right yeah. <laughs> right crazy right but right cool but yeah yeah but yeah, let's go let's go check out that piece definitely see what it is yeah. see what right. it is. Yeah. now actually like standing here seeing the the, the whole thing it's like it's mind-blowing man this this is really like yeah man it's powerful oh you put overtown miami oh yeah yeah, yeah. and then you see over there too ah yep yeah. hashtag yep it's like people oh shit the whole app yeah, man, little yeah, credits on the bottom. Yeah, yes, yeah, beautiful, man. Like, like I said, you know, this, this, this part of town, this part of the city has had a bad stigma over it for so long. Like, I think people just being able to walk by here and see world peace uh-huh. is a good statement, even just for this part of Miami, you know? But this is dope, man. And, and no mess ups, huh? No. <laughs> well, I mean, no. Like to the untrained eye, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's like we were talking about before. You know, uh, it's degrees of of what a mistake may be. Like maybe if you do something you didn't intend, then you did something you didn't intend. Mm-hmm. That doesn't necessarily make it a mistake. That's a fact. Cause see, it's it's um, yellow and red, yellow and red, mm-hmm. and then you see that in the center is four lines that have white and red yeah after those four lines i wanted to go back to yellow and red right but i wanted to go back to it in a way where this technically should be yellow okay this should be yellow yeah because it should be like the part right here from here up right and this should be red you know right but that doesn't make it wrong you yeah know, <laughs> exactly but if i could go back and do it again yeah i would go back and i would i would change it so everything from here down would mm-hmm. be reversed got you but it still looks cool it's oh like, man you know, yeah it's, it's still beautiful mural. beautiful it's a freaking mural. beautiful what makes a mural a mural like what by definition what is a mural as opposed to just paint on a wall like i don't know is, is there anything specific about murals like what, what defines them? I don't know. I mean, like, that's kind of debatable. That's kind of debatable. That's kind of like a hot topic, too, mm-hmm. in the public art world. Yeah. But I know this is a mural. That's you a know? I mean, Beautiful mural. <laughs> Beautiful mural. Yeah. Dope, yeah. man. I love it. I know uh, Commissioner Keon Harder, man. I know Moose Deek and everybody's going to be real pleased when they come back and see this. Right on, yeah. yeah. Cool. Right in the heart of Overtown, man. Thank you. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Beautiful.